You're still watching Just Nigeria from the BBC and Channels Television. Many thanks for staying here. Coming up. The researcher ensuring aircraft safety in Nigeria and assisting doctoral students get scholarships abroad. But before then, medical charity Doctors Without Borders is urging humanitarian organizations to return to Northeast Africa to help the desperate citizens of Sudan. Many charities left when war broke out a year ago. More than 12,000 people have died and almost 25 million people, around half of Sudan's population, are in need of humanitarian help and more than 8 million people have been displaced. BBC's Mercy Juma has visited neighboring Chad to speak to some of the victims of the violent conflict. On a street in Sudan, five unarmed civilians are threatened by an Arab militia at gunpoint. What happens next is too graphic to show. Ahmad is one of the men in the video. Incredibly, he survived the street execution. Like the 30-year-old shows us this exit wound where a bullet ripped through his body after they were shot at point-blank range. We laid down as if we were dead. Then someone told us anyone who was just injured should get up and run away. Like so many of the survivors of the Darfur violence, Ahmad now lives here across the border in neighboring Chad. 20 years after accusations of genocide, the memories are still fresh here. And now the UN is opening up a new investigation into the war crimes and ethnic cleansing. The violence continues to spread across Darfur. This group of men were abducted and forced to run to a local airport by the rapid support forces where they were beaten and tortured. Some disappeared, never to be seen again. Here we have heard story after story of people being killed, kidnapped or abused. Targeted, they say, because of their ethnicity. It comes as little surprise that these sorts of allegations and others in the wider Sudan conflict have made the International Criminal Court to say it has grounds to believe that war crimes are being committed. This is a genocide. It is a hundred percent genocide. If I have as a term to use, I will use. Reports of crimes committed by both the Rapid Support Forces and the Sudanese military continue to grow. The Rapid Support Forces told us the majority of accusations against it are untrue, but its troops are held accountable when incidents occur. Everyone in this camp knows someone who has been killed, injured or is missing. But survivors like Ahmad still believe there will be an end to this brutal war. We know one day, it might not be today or tomorrow, but one day justice will come. Despite the international outcry over the hundreds of thousands of deaths 20 years ago, no one has ever been convicted. The victims of this conflict are likely to face a similar weight.